Coming up, we're going to be talking about the live-action Beauty and the Beast, a live-action Snow White in the works, and my thoughts and feelings just briefly on the newest Marvel movie, Doctor Strange. All that, maybe a little bit more, in this episode of Diz Pop. This pop is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect vacation. Visit them on the web at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Well, hello, everybody. I am your host, Rhino Clavin, and I am here at my humble abode. And you can see my little microphone here in the shot. And I'm looking down because I am recording through my camera that I can't see, so I have to look here every now and then. But hopefully this will help me maintain better eye contact with you guys out there. But anyway, I just wanted to apologize. There was no episode of the show last week, um, and that was due to a technical malfunction on, on my part. Oh, excuse me. Um, it's wonderful weather here in Orlando. I'm just going to let everybody know I have all my doors, windows and doors open with the fans going. And unfortunately, there are some uh, excitable dogs in this neighborhood, and I own two of those excitable dogs. So I do apologize if you hear any growls or woofs or barks or anything like that. Right now, these two gentlemen are... Just sitting down here being nice, watching me, listening in. But my apologies. I'll try to edit around that as much as I can. So anyway, back to the show. Um, I, I apologize for no episode last week. Um, there was a little bit of a technical malfunction with my camera. I, I, I did the whole episode. I filmed it. And I sat and talked to myself for about 40 minutes. And then the file was corrupted, unfortunately. It happens every now and then when the when I use my camcorder. I don't know if it like shakes and does something to the memory card, but I couldn't rescue the file for some reason. Um, so, and I just didn't have it in me to do it again yet. But here we are, and this is some of the stuff I talked about. So we'll get back to it. Again, I apologize, but we're going to jump right in. The newest um, live action, the newest, or excuse me, the next movie to get the live action Disney uh, remake treatment is Beauty and the Beast coming out... Um, I believe this March. I should have checked that ahead of time. Sorry. Live action Beauty and the Beast release date. Let's see. I believe it's March. That's usually their trend. That was when they did Cinderella. Um, I know it's 20. Yeah, March 17th. Okay. There we go. Awesome. So they released um, some high resolution stills recently. Um, I believe Entertainment Weekly might have um, released these. But uh, we got our first look. Uh, I should say. Okay, well, first of all, we got our first look at uh, a bunch of these characters. So we got uh, Gaston here in what appears to be the, the you know, the very famous song, Gaston, um, seen in the pub. Uh, so Gaston's wearing his kind of traditional, what we remember, you know, Gaston in the high boots, the brown pants, the red petticoat. Um, and it looks pretty faithful to the original. In fact, it's fun if you look at this photo. In the background, you can see Gaston is actually mimicking um, the mural on the wall, which I believe is probably of Gaston, since it is uh, his pub. Does he own the pub? I don't know. I always wonder, because at Disney now, they have that Gaston's area, the tavern, but I don't know if he actually owns it or he just goes there a lot. But either, either way, regardless, um, I'm looking at something that seems very faithful. Uh to the to the animated film i should say we when we attended d23 last year uh last august august 2015 we got to see a little sneak peek at them filming well they hadn't even really started filming they had started like rehearsals so they were doing this scene in particular and uh, uh lefou uh played by josh gad and uh luke evans who is gaston they um you know sang us a little bit of gaston so that's how we knew that the song's in it but I'm very hopeful for this. Um, you know, I love all the music in there. I do believe that there are three new songs is what they, they talked about um, being in this film. But as long as they're including all the classics as well, I'll be happy. My dog does not agree with me. He is not on board. Um, well, let's move on to the next picture. We also got a, a look at, here's Gaston and Le Fou uh, riding um, horses in the countryside here. Um I think that Josh Gad cast as LeFou is probably perfect casting. He's got that, you know, that Olaf, we all know him as Olaf or from the Book of Mormon, but um, he's got that goofy, he's shorter than Luke Evans. He's, you know, not, I don't want, he's not fat, but he's like, you know, he's, he's cherub-like. And uh, I think he's going to be a wonderful LeFou because that's, you know, the character we all remember. 
Next, we got a look at Belle and her father and what appears to be his workshop because he's working at a table with some little tinkerings here. Kevin Klein is actually playing Maurice in the live action version. That is perfect. I love Kevin Klein. Who doesn't like a fish called Wanda? A fish to Wanda? A fish called Wanda, yeah. And, um, and, uh, uh, if you watch Bob's Burgers, he does provide the voice of the eccentric and insane landlord to the Belcher family. And I honestly think it is just the perfect role for uh, Kevin Klein. Just a, a hilarious guy. Also, one of my favorite movies, fun fact here, is A Life um, Life as a House, uh, starring Kevin Klein. And actually, it Hayden Christensen, I know that sounds terrible, but this is the movie where, you, where everyone watched and they were like, gosh, this kid is going to be a phenomenal actor. We have to hire him and everything. And um, yeah, so you should watch this movie though. Uh, be prepared though. You will cry, but like in a good uplifting humanity's great. I can, I can do something for others type of way. Also, it's got Scott Bakula in it. So not too shabby. So next up we have a photo of the, uh, the beast staff. Is that, is that what we refer to the helpers? The people that live, that live and work with him? I forget. Anyway, um, we've got uh, Cogsworth, Mrs. Potts, Lumiere, and uh, Babette, the French, um, who was the maid, but is now a feather brush. Uh, but I can't find her name listed who plays her. However, uh, Cogsworth is played by the one and only Ian McKellen. Um, Mrs. Potts is going to be played by Emma Thompson. And Lumiere, we all know, Ewan McGregor. So I am very... Uh, impressed with the lineup of voices they have here. I know that Stanley Tucci is also lending the vo his uh, voice to the role of uh, Cadenza. Um, and who doesn't love the Tooch? Um, now, I'm, now, let's take a, look, a closer look at Cogsworth. Cogsworth looks pretty good. I mean, he looks like a pretty intricate French clock. Um, I mean, I don't even know if that is the design of a French clock. Mrs. Potts, uh, like I get the design, but it's a little rough for me because it kind of just looks like a painted on face, but I haven't seen it in motion yet. So who knows, but maybe to look better on film too. It's hard to, when you take a still, but then something works in motion, but it doesn't work sitting still. So this could be one of those moments where like maybe the paint moves around to make up her mouth and the lips and stuff. The oddest one for me a little bit is Lumiere because it's basically a person as a candlestick. I'm like, I get it, but Lumiere was kind of straight up a candlestick and then the face was part of the candle. I'm okay that the face isn't part of the candle, but just as like a little man, I don't know. I don't know. I don't hate it. I just, I, you know, things have got to be different. It is a reimagining remake or whatever. So um, I'm okay with it. The the French maid, the Babette, uh, or whatever, that's the weirdest one to me. It's like a bird version of this thing. I don't, I don't know. Whatever. I'm not. I'm not going to pass judgment on that one right now. Um, I am super excited though because I did read an article um, with I think it was Ian McGregor and the director Bill Conan, and it was basically saying that they believe that the Be Our Guest scene is one of the most like intricate dance scenes that have ever been filmed. And um, on top of that nothing's really there it's pretty much all animated since it's all going to be like the the dishes and stuff like that coming to life it's kind of interesting even mcgregor was saying he was really struggling with the scene because uh he, like he would have like 50 people in the room and it was motion capture so even mcgregor actually is a lumiere um and he was saying he was so embarrassed they had to have people leave for a little bit because he was like i can't do this i feel stupid um but you know, Moulin Rouge is one of my favorite movies, so I am very, very excited to see uh, Ewan back in the role, uh, in a singing role again, and, and be our guest. I, I just, I can't wait. So we're going to move on, and the next photo that I have here is just, it looks like Belle. She's just kind of hanging out and looking through a window in the castle. I kind of like the intricate detail and the molding here. Um, it looks very elegant, and, you know, it is what it is. It's interest, It's nice to see Belle and her blue uh dress you know the standard um the dress that she wears when she's not in the yellow one um next we have the library and we get our first look here of the beast and it's bell and the beast looking at a book uh i like it i like it I was a little worried what the beast was going to look like because I had heard that it were having, or the rumor was they were having some trouble getting it to look just right. So they were taking a longer amount of time with the effects and everything because they wanted it to look perfect. 
I think it looks really good. I'm I'm happy with that design. Um, the uh, Beast is going to be played by Dan Stevens, uh, who I wasn't overly familiar with. Um, he's from Downton Abbey, I guess. Um, that's his big... Uh, in, a, in the TV show Legion, I don't know if anybody watched it on Sci-Fi Channel. I believe it was a spinoff of the the movie about the angels, uh, which I can't remember the name of right now, um, unfortunately. But um, I mean, he looks he looks like what Adam looks like when he turns back into a human. So I guess it's it's well cast. But the picture looks good. I like the library. I like the look of it. And then um, next up, we're going to take a look at Belle in her dress, in her yellow dress. Um, and again, pretty spot on to the movie. It looks like they're kind of, you know, they kind of take liberties some places, but they also want to really stay true to that visual. And, and they have to, because Beauty and the Beast was one of the, was a, an animated film nomi- nominated for Best Picture. And this was way back before, um, they even had a Best Animated Feature category. So, uh, I kind of I remember like going to see this in the movie theater. I was really young when this movie came out, but I I vaguely remember. I think we went for my birthday one year. Um, it's a movie. I love this movie. It's it's one of my favorites for sure. Um, next up, we have the what I only imagine is a shot from the scene of uh, the title song "Beauty and the Beast." You know, tale as old as time, and it's the Beast in his blue um, outfit, his b- blue formal gown, and Belle in her yellow formal gown, and. Um, I think it looks good. I enjoy the beast coat. I like the look of his design from this photo because you can kind of see his leg uh, a little bit here. Um, in this photo, if you look close, you can kind of see a little bit of the shape of him. And I don't know. I, I'm hopeful for this. These photos are, are pretty nice. And um, I love Emma Watson. And I like the, I pretty much, I feel like they nailed it with the cast. Um, it's just, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. It's one of those things. But March 17th, that is um, coming out. So we have lots to look forward to. Um, March, uh, oh my gosh, if it comes out March 17th, I also believe that's like the same week as the Power Ranger movie. Oh no. I'm very excited about that too. If you haven't seen the trailer for that movie, I'd be curious about your thoughts and feelings on that. Um, I'm going to look that up really quick. March 24th. Okay. Whew. Power Rangers comes out the following week. I don't like films that I like to have like to be competing against each other. At least not head to head. It's okay if they're in the same month. Um, but that, that, that's that. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty hopeful of that. And then um, since then as well, we do have some information. Yet another Disney classic is getting the, uh, the live action remake reboot. And next up, Snow White. At this, I mean... I'd, I'd be surprised if after Lion King we don't see Aristocats because I'm sure they're going to keep going that animal route. Um, and then I'm sure that uh, Pocahontas... Oh, Pocahontas, I don't know. I don't know if you'll ever see the light of day. But but anyway, so Disney is developing a Snow White live-action movie. Um, and the, uh, the interesting live-action musical. I'm sure this one's going to have to get a little beefed up, though, when it comes to the music because there are not, like, a ton of songs in this. I mean, there's the Hi-Ho... Um, there's the, the wishing well song, uh, there's the, um, there's another song in there, isn't there? Someday my prince will come. Um, but I'm sure it'll, I'm sure it'll get a little beefed up, sure some new songs as well, but interesting that's going to be a musical. Um, the, uh, studios in negotiations with Erin Cressida Wilson, who wrote the screenplay, the screenplay, excuse me, for the girl on the train. I saw this movie and it was like, 50 50 with critics i actually enjoyed the movie i thought it was i thought it was good i love emily blunt though and so and luke evans isn't that obviously they're both you know now part of the disney family because she's mary poppins and he's guest on but um i thought it was pretty well i it makes me hopeful the songwriters are the uh, the duo um who wrote the songs for the upcoming film la la land starring ryan gosling and emma stone and the previous that looks like a lot of fun and i've heard really good word of mouth about this film um, I'm very excited. It's a modern day like tribute to classic musicals. And come on, Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. What's not to love? Um, I also believe the director of that is the same guy who made um, that, oh my gosh, that jazz movie that got J.K. Simmons his uh, Academy Award. I can't remember it right now. I'm so sorry. Um, but but anyway, um, 
actually bugging me. I'm so sorry. Uh, J.K. Simmons and Miles Teller. Uh, and they were in... Oh, it's like Whiplash. I was going to say Crash, and I was like, that's not right. Because I was thinking of like the hit of the, the sound on the, on the helmet. But either way. Um, so Mark Platt is also producing this film, who... Um, who ironically produced La La Land, and he's also working with on uh, Mary Poppins Returns and and the Broadway musical Wicked. So he's got a nice body of work there, and clearly like an in with uh, Disney. So there's no director attached yet, though, and um, you know it's kind of crazy. This will be what is it? The 80 year anniversary next year? Isn't that insane? 80 years, like that blows my mind. Um, so. It's just, oh, in, uh, fun fact, in 1989, it was deemed uh, culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant and was put into the National Film Registry. So, obviously, it had to be there. I mean, it's basically the first full-length animated feature, right? Um, but what's interesting is this article I read also says that Disney is in talks. Uh, no, not Guy Ritchie. I'm sorry. I skipped a part. It's working on a spinoff to Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs as well. Um, following Snow White's sister, Rose Red. And if you've read the actual story, you're familiar with Rose Red. Um, I don't know if you guys, if any of you out there, I just hit my table. I'm sorry. Now we're shaking. It's an earthquake chest. Um, I had this clock when I was a kid that like looked kind of like an old man was the face and his name was like Father Time. And he would read you a bedtime story at night. And I thought this was the coolest thing ever. Like my mom had these really cool things she gave us. And, um, you know, it was probably on the heels of 2XL, like the robot that could talk to you as well, because I also had him. He was pretty awesome. But um, Father Time used to read us a story about Snow White and Rose Red. And so that's why I was always familiar with these classic tales. But anyway, I digress. Um, so, oh, we, we didn't really talk about it either yet. Have we um, Ice Cube working with Disney to do a modern reimagining of Oliver Twist? Um I saw this and I immediately was like, okay, they're going to kind of take the Annie route and, and update it for modern times, which, which I think is, is, oh, the corgis are off. Um, which I think is, is I'm not opposed to stuff like this. I'm not opposed to modernizing things. Um, you know, we, how many times can we see the same movie like remade, 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 you know, in the same way? Um, so I, my, my, do my dogs are rolling around on top of each other. Hey, hey, I'm shooting a, I'm shooting a show here. I'm shooting a show. They're jealous. They need attention. But anyway, um, you know, it's just kind of like, how many times are we going to see the same movie, the same movie, like, redone in the same way? So, I I am I like Ice Cube. I think he's funny. Um, I think he's talented. And um, I kind of maybe look forward to see what he brings to the table. I didn't see Annie yet. Uh, not Annie. Excuse me. I said Annie earlier. Yeah, Annie. Annie with uh, Jamie, Jamie Foxx. I didn't see that one yet, but I... I kind of wanted to, because um, I like Jamie Foxx. I like the girl a lot. Well, I like that little girl a lot from Beasts of, uh, Beasts of No Nation. Beasts of Another Nation. I've lost my mind, just like these two dogs uh, rolling around here. So if you uh, bear with me here for just a few more moments, I've got one more story. Okay, so really quick before we go, um, I saw Doctor Strange. Um, finally, I wasn't able to go opening weekend. My f I had some uh, friends from out of town who were in, and we did some nerdy uh, Power Ranger convention thing here this weekend yeah i know i'm a nerd anyway um i finally got to see it and i liked it i thought it was a good film i don't think i liked it as much as i wanted to like it i don't dislike any particular part about it it just doesn't feel i don't feel like i was wowed necessarily by any moment i do think that tilda swinton was actually um for me I thought she was the best part of the movie and i wish that they had explored her character more than they did um, I thought the score was okay because I know that Michael Cicchino is finally starting to work with Marvel to make um, more memorable scores because that's something they've been dinged on lately. Um, the movie's doing pretty well, pretty well for a, a you know an, an original, um, you know the first in a series. Uh, I believe it was tracking to be similar opening to um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, but it, regardless, it's a hit. It's an official hit. Um, getting decent reviews. I believe it was sitting at ninety percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh. I don't know that I would, I, anything in this movie, I was like wowed by anything in this movie. Like when I saw Guardians, I just remember like, and again, different genre. Guardians is so great and people love it because it was, um, it was 
you know, the first to kind of go in a different uh, genre almost because, yeah, it's a superhero film, but it's technically a space opera. Um, and it's like a B movie that's an A plus movie, though. And so it had a different, unique model, and it, it really embraced humor more than any of the other movies had. Um, I thought Civil War was great, obviously. Um, and this one was good. And I will see this movie again, and this is one that I will own. I mean, obviously, I'm going to own all the Marvel movies at some point, except for I don't really like Captain America 1, but you got to add it to your collection. But regardless, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Okay, so I like Benedict Cumberbatch quite a bit. I love Sherlock. Um, I liked him as Khan in Into Darkness, although I did think the casting choice was weird, but I do enjoy his performance in the film very much. Um, I loved the intimi uh, intimidation game, imitation game, excuse me. Um, and, you know, uh, I just, uh, oh, apparently he's going to be Shere Khan in the Andy Serkis Jungle Book. So, that's interesting. I am excited to see him as uh, the, as the voice of the Grinch, though. I think that's cool. You know, very distinct guy. Um, uh, you know, unique guy, funny guy. Um, I had accidentally like seen titles of articles where the whole debate was: is is Benedict Cumberbatch's Doctor Strange like the new Tony Stark? Like, is he the one who will take over when they finally don't when they remove Tony Stark? Robert Downey Jr. from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, I hope not, uh, because, you know, I kind of, like, expected him to be really fast and quippy, and, like, yeah, he's kind of a jerk, for sure. I mean, he's arrogant and all that stuff, and he's got those similar qualities like Tony Stark, so actually I can't wait to see those two characters in a scene together, which hopefully we'll get because um, Benedict Cumberbatch confirmed that he will be in Avengers uh, Infinity War. Um it um which comes out in 2018 sorry um but it's just not it's not the same like like i love tony stark still i love iron man like his quip he's he's fast smart and though the iron man movies are not my favorite in the marvel um cinematic universe although i really do enjoy iron man 3 i do love robert downey jr as iron man and i love that character um and to me stephen strange is good and similar but I wish I had never seen that that comment because I, I don't know if that put an expectation at me that I didn't get, really get delivered on. I don't know if he never – he necessarily had like an amazing moment to perform either. There was no like moment in this movie, like big, you know, big Benedict Cumberbatch moment, you know. Like in Star Trek Into Darkness, he had that, you know. Um, in Imitation Game, obviously. I mean he was nominated for an Academy Award for that. Like he had that um, – yeah, he was nominated for a Academy Award for that. I always second guess myself. Anyway, um, he's good. I, I wouldn't want anybody else in the role, and I'm happy he's in these Marvel movies. Um, I just kind of like clearly they're taking. They felt like they were taking massive risk. I mean, at D23 when they first were talking about it, they said the word mystical and magic so many times that they were like, "We want people to understand that this is different than the other ones," and it certainly is. And maybe that's the the thing too. Like I. It's grounded in reality, which is good, so it's relatable. Um, and the visuals, I mean, my gosh, it is like art come to life at some parts. Um, it's wonderful. I saw it in 3D and IMAX, um, and I would definitely recommend. I mean, the 3D, you're only going to get an experience in 3D like the one you will have in this movie in the movie theater. This movie is clearly influenced by films like the um, uh, like Inception because uh, there's the rotating hallway, things, things like that that are a little more mind-bending. The Matrix... I can see for sure having an influence on this, or at least the technology that was used to film the original Matrix is employed here. Um, and uh, Tilda Swinton was great. Uh, uh, um, gosh, I'm going to say his wrong his name wrong. I always say it wrong, um, and I love him. Uh, Chwitl El Eljifor? Eljifor? Don't tell me how to say it again. I'm going to look it up right after this so I can say it wrong. I used to say it so well. I feel bad. But, you know, from uh, 12 Years a Slave, he's, he's fantastic in that. He's great in Serenity as the uh, the villain. Um, the Firefly movie, if you haven't seen that, definitely watch that. Um, and I liked him in this, and I look forward to his his future. Everybody. Rachel McAdams is great. I always love Rachel McAdams, though. How can you not? Um, I, had to, I had to Google some Easter eggs because there are some fun Marvel uh, Easter eggs in this film as well. You have to make sure you stay all the way through the credits, though. There are two end credit scenes. The mid-end the mid -end credit scene is fun. Because it kind of teases a Marvel movie. Um, you know, obviously they always tease a Marvel movie. But this one is like teasing a movie that we're not going to really get until the end of next year. But I am very excited for. Um, 
I did see the Guardians trailer in this, which I've already seen online, but it's just something about seeing it, you know, in a theater. It just makes you very excited. Um, very exciting things coming from Marvel. I thought the movie was was really, was good. I thought it was a solid movie. Um, it's definitely an origin story. Um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to put a bad reflection on it. I just wasn't in love with it as much as I, I wanted to be. Mads Mikkelsen as the bad guy was good. I feel like almost underutilized. There are, there is a scene with him and Doctor Strange though, where he does give that wonderful nuanced performance that he often gives. Um, if you've never seen the show Hannibal, definitely check that out. Um, if you've got a strong stomach, obviously, but it's a beautiful, beautifully filmed television show. Um, a lot of visual, um, metaphors kind of brought to life and stuff. Uh, it's just, it's a work of art. Um, and then there's also, I mean, come on, he's going to be in Rogue One, a Star Wars story, so Disney loves him. Um, but yeah, overall, there was never that, there wasn't that moment in this film for me, like that big, great moment. Like in Guardians, you had that finale um, with, with uh, you know, all the Nova, the Nova Corp and everything. And um, and I'm not saying it has to have a, a, a scale on that that sense but i wanted like a big emotional moment i guess you know i wanted i wanted the end of iron man one when iron man has to like you know he's fighting his the guy who basically kind of took over the company after the parents died and you know and he's got to protect the girl and this like i don't know it had it it had wonderful visuals and it's definitely worth seeing and i would definitely recommend seeing in the movie theater i do not think you would be disappointed even though i keep making that disappointed face i enjoyed it I will probably own it as well. Let's not kid ourselves. I will own it. I don't know why I'm being being this way. But um, yeah, worth checking out. I really hope that they get even more like out there in the, in the sequel because it was nice. It's clear to see that people are embracing it. I like that they're kind of trying to not stick to the same formula they keep sticking to. Um, this does have that sense and feeling like it is going to be its own kind of universe irrelevant to the MCU in some ways, but not in all ways. Um, and you'll see in the... In the film, but I have seen some interesting articles that are saying that Doctor Strange is the gateway into the the once the phases are, the three phases are wrapped up. Once we have our second Infinity War, like he's going to be the gateway into what happens when you know we have to when Thor's done and Robert Downey Jr.'s done, Chris Hemsworth, Robert Downey Jr., um, Steve Rogers, uh, Chris Evans. When they're all those characters need to move on, like are we going to shift over? Are we going to like, how are we going to do it? And they're saying that this character potentially opens that gateway for us. But um, good movie. Check it out. If you've seen it, let me know what you think in the comment section. Um, I think that's really going to do it for right now. I know that was kind of quick. and uh, hmm, But um, I want to just say I uh, look forward to some more holiday-themed episodes coming up in the future. I know I, I kind of went crazy with the Halloween stuff. But I'll do a couple Christmas ones. I don't know how many tutorials there are going to be. Don't get crazy. But maybe we'll do something where we like make some ornaments. Or maybe we should learn how to make some food before Thanksgiving. That would be fun. Like, Does everybody have a favorite thing they make for Thanksgiving? Um, I do. Well, I make it for Christmas. But... Since since I'm going to be here for Thanksgiving, I think I could make it this year. But maybe we see see if there's like a fun Disney holiday themed thing and we can do that. I'm, I'm not making any promises, so don't get too excited. But no, I'm just kidding. But let me know what you guys want to see, what you want to hear more of. Um, hopefully down the road too. Uh, there's I want to talk more about Civil War II, the comic event going on now. It's kind of coming to a close. I think there's only like two issues left, one or two issues left maybe. Um, then there's the Defenders. Um you know, the Netflix series that's on our way. We've got a, um, uh, the Iron Fist on its way. I liked the preview that came out. It looked pretty cool. And then um, we've got some comics to talk about. Uh, the, 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 uh, the new Iron Man, Ironheart, uh, Riri Williams. There's the, um, uh, the new, like, they're not the Avengers, but the team up that was created as the result of uh, Civil War II. Uh, they, we've still got Disney comics, lots, lots of stuff to talk about. Um, so if there are things that you want to see pursued or anything like that, let me know, tweet at me, Diz pop show. Um, you can, we're on Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Um, yeah. So just let me know what you think. Um, I think that'll do it though. I will see you guys next time in another episode of Diz pop. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.